Hey everybody, this is Rhino, and we're back to another recording of Hearthstone. Today is Wednesday, September 19th. We are on the European account, and because of the special event they're doing for Knights of the Frozen Throne cards that they want us to play, we're not making a lot of progress as far as playing the cards and doing the other daily quests. And oh, by the way, by the time I finish this quest, there's another quest to win five Tavern Brawls. And I haven't even won one so far. And this is only the European account. So first thing I want to do is I've made a custom deck full of Knights of the Frozen Throne cards. I'm just going to play ranked because why not get some ranked wins. And we're just going to cover the news. And then when the news is out and an episode is done, whichever happens first, I think I'm just going into a silent post show. I think opening the door to going back to Silent Post shows might be interesting, at least as an idea, uh, because clearly Hearthstone is going to force me to play some more Hearthstone than I'd like to. Uh, the good news is, though, my system of taking a, a break from PC Gamer seems like it is working pretty well. Uh, there's tons and tons of games that have just come out on Steam. I'm much more happier talking and just ever so slightly complaining about the quality of games that that are coming out on steam than i am talking about whatever manufactured drama a pc gamer uh, your gamer uh, and, and you know pc gamer your gamer rock paper shotgun i believe they were all the exact same company so three different quote-unquote sources really just echoing each other so now, now I'm down to just Tech Raptor, which barely puts out any articles, um, and Gamma Sutra, which doesn't do any editorials. Uh, no, Gamma Sutra does, but Gamatsu doesn't. Um, and so, without those editorial articles and those opinionated articles that I'm tired of seeing, it feels a lot better covering the news. Uh, so let's move on. We have a game on Steam called Frozen Knight. Ironically, since it's the Knights of the Frozen Throne uh, experience Speak right now. Peace. I'm hoping that doesn't trigger Don't anything. Burn. So this has to be the the rat trap, I think. It says, Frozen Knight is a third-person single-player action adventure game with beautiful graphics and realistic fighting. In the game, a player must ride on his horse, seize weapons, and destroy the enemy and, and find their own horse can win. That seems like a really specific way to play games. And that's not really what I would describe this as. So this looks like beautiful graphics that are asset flips. Uh, with you in a snowy area but you're on a horse riding do. and you're a cowboy so it the inconsistency here is the problem uh, the trailer starts with the horse and the cowboy on the top of a tall tower how you would or why you would get a horse at the top of a tall tower what makes to no do. sense and this is just they're just spinning around to show off the area that they've asset flipped and, and that's all I can Why really call it yeah and all this gameplay video is is just that one point and at the very end he jumps off the tower Yep. And English language is not supported. This is a Chinese only game. <laughs> yeah, the, the fact that China isn't approving Chinese games is letting these cheap Chinese bad games uh, flood on the Steam. Uh, they probably were on the way towards flooding on the Steam anyways, uh, to be fair. Like, that was just the way things were going to go. Uh, but it certainly has increased see. I sense your struggle. The glory is 
Mistaken on a couple of those. Next, we have a game called Farstorm. F A R S T O R M. Probably didn't need to spell that. Farstorm is a 3D action anime RPG, also known apparently as an A A R B G, where you control uh, Kazuko, a elven princess who has a tyrant father. Go back in time and stop your father from taking over the throne, even if it costs you your life. For the people of Farstorm. Um, so what is this really? It looks like it's just a low effort fantasy what to do. game what to do. with an anime character added. And I'm pretty sure these elven anime characters are getting added because I've seen a couple of games like this. I'm pretty sure they're just asset flips. Uh, in fact, I see, I've seen a UI that looks almost exactly like this and it does not match the rest of the the environment in quality. To my side. It says it's English only. 20% off for $3.99. Is this from the same developer that made something else? It's very similar to now. So somebody either put something on free on the Unity or Unreal Asset Store that looked, caught a bunch of people's eyes so that they thought they could make asset flips with it, or somebody cracked or stole it in some other way. Because it seems like this is going to be a consistent thing for, for a while. Fortunately, this is not as close as some of other asset flip games where uh, where some asset flip games are starting to get really, really bad about looking really, really good when they aren't. Um, and of course, I call a lot of games asset flips and they it's possible none of them actually are. It's just what they look like. That's why I try to say it looks like that and give an opinion on what I'm perceiving, not give a implication that I've done the research, which I haven't, to see how it actually was developed. Moving on, since I closed that tab, we have a game called Landinair, L-A-N-D-I-N-A-R, Into the Void. They say it's an action-packed space adventure. You play as the captain down on your luck, but he's going to make a change. Get into your ship and set your own path. So this you looks like it. it's a space shooter style game. Uh, maybe there's some trading. Maybe there's some other elements, but the video is most is really just showing space shooting right now. So that might be all you're doing. Back in Windows 95, a space shooting game uh, would have been amazing. But nowadays, not so much. It seems like we this game actually does have strength. a little bit more. You can upgrade your ships, you can walk around to some kind of space station. Uh, so there's a little bit of that, but I, I think 90% or more of the game will be space shooting. There, there will, probably won't be training, there probably won't be a big complex storyline or anything like that. Uh, Land and Air is $15.99, which is way too expensive. And let's see if this developer has developed anything else. I made a game called Convoy. Let's see what Convoy's reviews are at. Convoy is 78% positive with 741 reviews. Hmm. But the graphics don't look amazingly good. I wonder. Not sure I really want to play a game that's just about running a convoy from one point to the other. And both of these games feel like they are uh, 
inspired by FTL. And I'm not sure I would particularly want to play another FTL game that isn't developed by FTL uh, developers. So yeah, even at 78% positive, I'm still kind of close Convoy and close both games. Because neither one caught my attention. I'm probably being a little ungenerous there. But, you know, being a little bit more picky on games wouldn't be a bad thing. Moving on, we have a game called Sears Isle. S-E-E-R-S. -E Sears Isle is a narrative game set in a fantasy version of a medieval northern Europe where your choices impact the fate of a of a group of characters. The thumbnail on this is animated in an interesting way and I'm looking at the trailer and it looks like some Viking Nordic style characters animated in an interesting way. Honestly, this animation style, I think, I wish this w was the definition of a Western style of animation. Um, because Looking at this, I see probably nothing I can attribute to, oh, this person is just trying to, trying to clone anime characters. Um, I guess I should pay more attention to the eye size. So if they have big eyes and, and small mouths, uh, that, that was the old, old way to say anime characters. Or anime characters, but I, I, I'm not sure that's it anymore. See, his eye looks, eye looks really, really well drawn. There may not be much of a story here. This may be the equivalent of playing a Walking Dead in a style of game where you're just given text on the screen and you're not even given voice acting. I suppose that was one thing that the Walking Dead did well and the Telltale Games did well is that they voice acted everything. Uh, it's in English and French, uh, so maybe it's a French animation style that I'm looking at. That's very possible. Um, let's see. I sense your strength. Alright, kill that one. Then are we gonna kill this one? We might as well. Just playing. Apparently, there's a, a bundle game called Along the Edge. Also, so I'm seeing on Steam the new mature content description. It seems like that's gonna be on all games. It says, Sears Isle contains infrequent non-graphic nudity and sexual content. This product may not be appropriate for all audiences. Which, that probably is an equivalent of saying it's rated teen. Alright, let's see if there's a rating here on this game. Not that I see. But it does say it is tagged with nudity. Jaina versus Jaina. So it seems like you asked for it. What oh, I've it is found fun. here is a hidden gem. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> of course, this is also recommending just more visual novels to me. Uh, so I'm going to definitely put Seer on the wish list. 10% off for $11.69. The price is high. You can't deny that. But I think this is not one to miss. It's from this developer Nova Box. 
who's only made this game and Along the Edge. So I'm gonna put both of those games on the wish list. Along the Edge is 94% positive of 173 user reviews. I rejected that game already. I'm opening up more games to look at. So I'm looking at a visual novel called Will, A Wonderful World, Hyphen Will. It is overwhelmingly positive visual novel. A game. Let's see, how much is this? $14.99. To end my turn. Pay attention to playing Hearthstone just a little bit. Hmm. Moving on. We have a Chinese game. Only in Chinese characters. So can't say anything about that game. So I'll close that tab. Let's see. Gamatsu. The matter is an article, Resonance of Fate 4K HD Edition announced for the PS4 and PC due out worldwide October 18th. We had little tricker, trickling rumors of Resonance of Fate coming out. Uh, we weren't, I think, given any idea that it was going to be a 4K HD edition. It's a Japanese RPG game that I think probably stays um, stays in its own little story so if you didn't want to play the uh, play any of the Final Fantasy games or if you played them all already then there um, there's definitely a single probably standalone story you could have in this but it is also an older Somebody game so you're, you. you're buying into playing something that you probably aren't nostalgic for. It might be a good introductory JRPG. Um, also being an older game I'm looking at these characters and wow one of those characters in the cutscene just leaned back and her boobs managed to jiggle way more than would be realistic. Uh, but what I was going to say <laughs> before I saw that is all these characters seem to be slightly older. Like, you're not running into to the characters that look like they're at best 18 years old and at worst 10 or younger. And Residence of Fate looks really, really pretty. Might be a shorter experience. I, I still can't figure out, like, right now I, I am so not certain about what I should do with my channel. The thought of doing a JRPG is just, like, so, so far away um, from being realistically possible. It just seems like this Speak unattainable thought or goal. And it would certainly be a new thing for me, definitely, because I certainly haven't played a lot of RPG, JRPGs, if any. Um, not to, I don't think I've played any to completion. I may have played a few for a small few seconds. Moving on, we have a game called Pixel Maze on Steam. It is pictograms, and so not really a big pixel maze uh, they're one of the solutions is a, a Mario of sorts and several other copyrighted characters like the minions the zombies from uh, what to do what to from do plants vs zombies the bat logo <laughs> Just keep on playing cards. That's all I need to do. 
So this My game has 27 achievements, a 10% off for $3.59. It's using copyrighted images uh, as a solution, which probably is not legal. It's asking $3.59 for a game that maybe if it was 60 cents I'd consider it, but yeah, it seems pretty simplistic one screen Unity style game. So closing that tab and moving on to the next thing. From the the sun has set for me. Only yes. a fool rejects the Lich King. Yeah, I sense your this. Hey, one's an interesting one for Gamatsu. We have an article Kinkai Bencho Otome Second Rumble has been announced for the PS Vita. Um, so. Oh. This looks like it's a visual novel of a bunch of guys who fight each other. Um, let's see. It's, yep, that, it's tagged as a visual novel from Spike Chunsoft. Let's see. It'll launch in 2019 in Japan. It will almost certainly never come out to the rest of the world. Weird that they're still making Vita games, but I imagine there was just a lot of them that were still in development. Uh, and it's gonna be probably a year until Vita games just stop getting made completely. I believe Randy Pittsford retweeted a guy and either the person he retweeted deleted the tweet or got banned or something. I like I don't know if this is Randy Pittsford's new way of dealing with harassment is retweeting and putting a spotlight on on harassers. I don't see a reason why you'd do that. Uh, so yeah, September 18th, I, I see Randy Pittsburgh, check out this dude's Twitter profile and his comment. And then it says the tweet is unavailable. And clicking on the link it says, sorry that page doesn't exist. So, unless what is happening here is I am somehow blocked that would be the only thing I could think of and even at that I just opened it in an incognito mode and it didn't didn't come up either so yeah I, I don't know what you what you do there Uh, looking at the comments on this, it says, the first response My is, yep, I'm sorry, Randy. Uh, I was pissed at something else. Love your games and know that, that good development could take time. Sorry, I took my problems out on you. Um, mm. So somebody said something nasty and deleted. Hmm. It seems to have to, to be a slightly hostile, as best Oops. as I can tell. Um, okay, here's the exact quote. Oh yeah, I saw this quote. It's just make the a new effing game already. Like, okay, that's fair enough response, I suppose. It's, well, while a bit aggressive, using the other word. Uh, I think a lot of Borderlands fans would be like, just make a new Borderlands oh, game. Uh, of course, you have to be careful here because they did make other games. They made Battleborn, they made uh, Bulletstorm remake, they, they published We Happy Few. Uh, 
So yeah, the more and more I think about it, I'm not 100% confident that a Borderlands 3 made by the people who run Gearbox now, as they are now, is inherently going to be a good game anyways. Finally! Finally we have gotten to the point where we can just start doing the tavern buffs. Ah, uh, this is going to take all night. And I started late, shouldn't have done that. So now I'm just going to play the mage. And I'm ho looking and hoping for quick victories. We have a game on Steam called Jaywalker. Um, maybe I should mute Randy Pitchford. Um, yeah, I probably should. If I'm going to take a vacation and not look at, at reactionary and hostile SJW people, Randy Pitchford is also one of the ones. So I need to mute him and go like um just follow gearbox like randy pitchford doesn't really put anything out is that is that important anymore i think i've long since made the case and randy pitchford himself has long since made the case that he's not the most good in boss he really would be nice if he wasn't in charge of gearbox and somebody else was but I don't know who that other person would be. Uh, do you get Gabe Newell in there and then you never make a game? Do you get the EA president and, and then everything's full of microtransactions? By the way, EA owns Gearbox, uh, Borderlands, so EA could theoretically make Borderlands with some other company. Uh, so yeah, who who is the right kind of boss in the video game industry? It, it's probably some independent developer uh, the binding of Isaac creator that that's who should be in charge of gearbox yeah like he made consistent upgrades put a lot of effort and love into the binding of Isaac I think if he has passion and worked on on the Borderlands series he would probably run it pretty well job done uh, we've got a game on Steam called Jaywalker. It seems like it's basically Frogger, except for you're playing, you're jaywalking as a human, and it's in 3D, but it's a pretty low effort asset flip game. Uh, $3.99. Nothing here interests me visually. Uh, so I can close that tab pretty quickly. Is frozen. Time melts away. Hmm. Hmm. Well okay. Gamma Sutra has an article. Sony is making a mini console debut with the PlayStation Classic. It looks to me like the PlayStation Classic, in comparison to the Nintendo Classic, is actually going to work off of the same connectors as a PlayStation controller. Uh, as HDMI output as I'm watching this video, it's going to have 20 games on it. It says it's two replica controllers in, are included, I must but I'm not sure that the port's different. as a power on button and a reset button. I think the the lid also opens an open button to change the virtual disc i wonder if the original playstation controllers and replicas have been slightly changed and then 20 preloaded games so I, I don't know if you actually have to change the disc or whether the open button is really just a menu button Let's see, Final Fantasy VII, Ridge Racer, Type 4, Wild Arms, and Tekken 3, as well as two replica uh, uh, controllers. PlayStation Classic will retail for $99.99 and it launches December 3rd. Um, I must decide. Precisely 24 years after the original PlayStation hit the shelf. 
I could see people being hyped about that. Let's see. Play this. And play this. And play this. Job done. And in turn. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if they find that you there's enough room on the PlayStation uh, Mini to hold perhaps a lot more PlayStation games, but it is kind of questionable if it could hold the entire collection of the PlayStation 1 library, because I don't Why think the Nintendo Minis hot. really had quite enough space to hold the Nintendo games, and those would have been a lot smaller than, than a PlayStation game. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe you can only get five, maybe ten more games on the PlayStation original just because of the size of them. But it might also be the case that there actually is a seeding ROM of some sort in that, and a laser reader, uh, which that, that would be very odd if there actually is. Um, so I don't know if there will be some opportunity to add more games or if this is going to end up having a second generation of PlayStation um, 1 games. That was the question, and I was still kind of wondering about that, is will there be a new Nintendo Classic that comes out at some point that is um, actually a lot more uh, ha has a second generation, a second collection of games, and how many of these mini consoles are Japanese people in particular willing to collect? Because I think you go like the NES Classic, the Square version, and then the second generation NES Classic, and then there's really no way to put any more sell a third version of that and as far as the super nes like i don't think there was a second generation that was drastically different looking on the super nes hmm. just playing cards i guess GameIndustry.biz is quite weird now because of my, all my ad blocking. It seems like every single every single image that they have on GameIndustry.biz is blocked by my ad blocker, uh, which is weird. Like the images even of their staff writer are blocked. Uh, interesting. Uh, anyways, GameIndustry.biz has a uh, article. Valve and Ubisoft have been vi fined for breach of French consumer law. Uh, Steam and Uplay's latest store friends caught up in the Euro European consumer rights violations. Let's see, what is this? Uh, what did... Says, well... As revealed by French Review's website Milfrag no via PC Games In, Steam and Uplay in France currently display notices explaining the, the respective breaches. While neither notice is explicit about the nature of the violation, they both uh, pertain to the contract of sales or supply of services. Uh, so I imagine what this is is a case of them not giving long enough refund periods or no questions asked refunds periods that would be required in France if I was to just guess. As a result, Valve has been fined like 
147,000 euro, where Ubisoft will have to pay 180,000 euro. Um, which is kind of surprising that you play um, would be the bigger person there to get fined. Because clearly there would be more sales on, on Steam storefront than you play. But let's let's put on our tinfoil hats for a second. Ubisoft has been under the threat of being acquired by Viacom for about five years. And finally at the beginning of this year Viacom said we're not gonna we're not going to buy uh, try and take over Ubisoft anymore. And instead they they sold some controlling shares to the Canadian Teachers Union, I believe, um, was, was who some of the people who bought those shares instead. Viacom is this legalized established monopoly set up by Napoleon for his cousin, and it was a monopoly over all of the viaducts in... Um, Speak your peace. I would think France, but maybe I'm thinking wrong. Maybe Napoleon was in charge of France. Yeah. Yeah, maybe these two stories don't work together. I'd have to I'd have to do more research and say, is Viacom a French company? Um Let's see. How could we do this? Easily. I must choose. Let's see. Um. Ubisoft. And then. Viacom. Viacom. By a calm Wikipedia. Let's, let's do a little research. Fact checking ruins streams. Okay. Viacom, of course, is now a mass media company, not a viaduct company. Well, Viacom was created as a spin-off from the original company, uh, which which was which was renamed as CBS. All right, where where am I getting all this information? I'm totally wrong. Hey, Viacom's Wikipedia's copyright claim complaints against YouTube is the second issue. What? Just completely confused here. Like I, I, I think I'm spouting off just. Hmm. Maybe Viacom's not the name of it. Soft Wikipedia. Me. Ubisoft 
is a French video game company. So the odd, the, the, it's kind of odd that France would would find their own company, but I guess they they must have really been Vivendi. Ah, Vivendi. Okay. Since around 2015, according to Wikipedia, the French mass media company Vivendi has been seeking to expand its media projections through the acquisitions and business deals. Let's see. Uh, let's see. History. Origins of Vivendi. Like, so I'm not just spouting garbage here. Uh, I'm only halfway spouting garbage. Unity, precision, perfection. Uh, on 14th of December 1858, a water company named the Campagna Generate des Oz was created by an imperial decree, Napoleon III, in 1854. Uh, it obtained a concession in order to supply water to the public in. Lion. Okay. So yeah, it's Vivendi. Vivendi is a Paris France thing. So tinfoil hat back on now that I've done some research. My maybe this finding of U Ubisoft is literally an effort by the French government or this French agency. To weaken Ubisoft, another French company that apparently does not have the ear of the government as much, so that uh, so that Vivendi could come back and purchase the company and take control over it. That is certainly a tinfoil hat accusation. I I spent way too much. Um, there's. Unfortunately, this GameIndustry.biz article has no um, has no real evidence, and the original article is in French, and it is coming from a site that I, is questionable at best. Because um, I I can't. The original article says Time passes. It, it's bad refund policies. It says let's, let's dig into the the depths here and see what see the what the original the article or the translation of the original article Report you so. is. Before me. It says According to article L221-18 of the French Consumer Code, consumers have 14 days to exercise the right of withdrawal. Essentially, sellers have to offer buyers a two-week refund period. Neither your citation is specific about how the policy is being violated, but Uplay offers no refund on digital sales. Steam meets the 14-day right of withdrawal period, but you can't refund the game if you played it for more than two hours. And this is likely what's causing the issue. In theory, you play and Steam are free to violate that right of withdrawal provision, but as noted by um, but as noted by Article L221-5, consumers have to be expressly informed that they are being denied those rights. What does that mean for you? If you're in France, it means now you're getting warning on the affected store showing the citation. Oh. So they can just continue doing whatever they want <laughs> and it doesn't really matter going forward. It's just that they had to, in the first instance of this, uh, they weren't warning people the first time and now they would have to be. And the fines aren't that big, so forget my tinfoil hat thought that this is a Viacom uh, effort to weaken U U Ubisoft and Valve just for the fun of it. Let's let's face it, European countries hate almost all American countries. Maybe for good reason, maybe not. Um, 
certainly a lot of the censorship laws are, are directly targeted at Google. Um, just, which, yeah, that sucks, certainly. Moving on, that, that was a waste of time. Uh, but an interesting thought experiment, I guess. It was fun to think that maybe there was a bit more of a conspiracy there, but there probably isn't. Hmm. I'd have to really think about if I'm getting more into conspiracy thinking or less. Uh, probably about the same as I always have. I thought they were fun to think about, but not immediately believed any of them. Uh, and I wouldn't believe any of them without some actual hard evidence. We have a game on Steam called Ring of Elysium. Escape an astonishing disaster in Ring of Elysium, a battle royale shooter developed by Tencent Games. Interesting. Tencent, of course, the parent company of uh, PUBG, so... Hey, you want to play a game that probably stole the programming code of PUBG? Or... I think they also have some League of Legends and Riot games. I think they also own that. Tencent being the giant Chinese game company that can't publish games in Chinese in China anymore. Uh, this game is says, says it's English only in the interface. It's free to play. Um, and it looks like garbage. Honestly. It, it does not have a level of polish to it that you would expect from a first person shooter or you would expect from Tencent games. I'm surprised it's not in multiple languages or at least Chinese. It, it seems like it's a very snowy themed type area. PUBG. Ripoff. Um, Let's see, the only other game Tencent Games has put out is a game called Shadow Mist in 2017 that is 59% positive of 22 user reviews. Like, so, passes. Tencent may be a giant company because it has the Chinese government support, or at least it did for a while there, but clearly it hasn't established any kind of foothold in Steam. I almost wonder if maybe this is a joke and this actually they're spelling Tencent a different way. Like this is a troll pretending to be Tencent games. No, that's spelled the same way. Okay, well, forget Ring of a of Elysium, which not a good name anyways. Still trying to get Tavern Balls, still trying to get spells. The only one I was getting any progress with was playing, I believe, the Warrior. So let's just hop over to the Warrior and see if we can get a victory. Gamma Sutra has an article, get a job, High Res Studios is hiring a lead QA analyst. I think I, at this point, need to applaud High Res Studios' hiring practices of being very open and listing every single job on Gamma Sutra. I feel like a lot of companies could be listing their job listings publicly, more publicly, and they're just not. And that probably is opening the door to a lot more nepotism. Uh, Hyro Studios location for the lead QA analysis is in Alpharetta, Georgia. Um, seems like they, they're having trouble filling some spots. Uh, yeah, you, you don't see Gearbox job listings on Gamma Sutra. You don't see Ubisoft. You don't see EA job listings. You don't see um, Nintendo job listings. Like, we should... If, if you want more of a diverse group of people making video games and you want them to be qualified at doing their job and the best employee that you can find uh, 
based on their merit to be hired. Both of those goals, you get closer to both of those goals by publishing job listings in a much broader environment than just on your website or, you know, friends of friends recommending people. Moving on, Gamesser has an article. Summer Adventure no Game peace, Summer of no Mara, M-A-R-A, announced for the PS4, Switch, and PC. Uh, it's from the developer of D-Land, D-E-I-L-A-N-D. -E I've never heard of that game. It's coming out in 2019. And this is some screenshots at the gallery. Seems like it's a 3D esque uh, game kind of like stardew valley fishing growing crops wandering around swimming Yeah, this, this Summer Mara looks like it's just a kids-friendly game. Hmm. It seems to be... Mara seems to be an island life style character. No like a Hawaiian no living on a small island. Yeah. It looks like a kid-friendly experience. When it comes out, I'll be more interested in it. But of course, right now, there's really no reason to be interested in a game that doesn't even have a release date. Time passes. Strike. We have a game on Steam called Click and Manage Tycoon, which does not seem like it's a clicker or tycoon game. Instead, what it looks like is it's just an asset flip game that has been given a weird name for no reason. And I'm immediately turned off by this game, so it's 25% off for $2.99, and I'm closing the down. Like, bad name, bad looking trailer, bad game, didn't need. Uh, to look at it that long. Oh. There's one for each card in your opponent's hand. We have a game on Steam called Under Hero. Under Hero is a 2D side-scrolling RPG adventure game with time-based combat, so no turns. Inspired by Paper Mario, another RPG, it tells the story of a world where the chosen hero has failed and the underling of the main villain takes over, I guess. Hmm. Calls. Let's see what this game really looks like. These video, these screenshots are taking a while to load, so I don't know if my internet is quite set the way it should be. But I'm probably gonna take a month off with messing with internet settings too, because I've wasted probably four days this month tweaking internet settings for no real reason, other than I find it an enjoyable hobby. This doesn't look as smoothly animated as I'd like, but I think there's a game here. I don't think this is just a simplistic platformer or boss fight style game. Um, I think there's probably enough here to, to keep an eye on it and see if some user reviews come out. 
and push me either into buying it or not. It's $14.99 right now with no discount. But I would say Under Hero deserves at least a chance. Uh, Gamatsu has an article. THQ Nordic acquires Alone of the Dark, Alone in the Dark, and Act of War. Uh, no longer in the hands of Atari Europe. THQ Nordic still on a acquisition spree, and I have no idea why they're doing this. It's, it just seems like, really, do you need to buy all of this stuff in one year's time? Like, couldn't you buy the license to some of these games and have these games come out? over the period of three or four years. Um, ash to ash. Roots clutch. Branches Let's grow. see. The press release here says THQ Nordic uh, as it announces the acquisition of the intellectual properties alone in the dark and act of war has been finalized with Atari Europe SAS based in Paris, France. The acquisition has been handled by THQ Nordic AB based in Karlstad, Sweden, and daily operations, sales, and distributions will be done by THQ Nordic GmbH in Vienna, Austria. Now, here's a one assumes that this is all of the Alone in the Dark properties. So, the original, like Windows 95 Alone in the Dark game that wouldn't make a lot of sense to exist on top of um, the well on top of pretty much everything else Melt away. which one of these does more damage Like, maybe the new Alone in the Dark assets could be used for some new new Alone in the Dark game, but the old Alone in the Dark doesn't make any sense. Uh, as far as Act of War, I've never even heard of it. It's described as a real-time strategy game developed by Eugene Systems that featured a finely grained story fabricated by the New York Times best-selling author Dale Brown, which I guess maybe maybe there's something in that story of Act of War that would make sense for him to acquire it. This will probably intrigue at least one of my fans because I recall one of my fans a long long time ago said they loved Mutant Football League. Mutant Football League Dynasty Edition launches October 30th according to Gematsu. Let's do this. And let's Melt do this. Away. And no this. And do this. Job's done. I'm gonna lose. Um I'm not a well. I, I've never played the Mutant Football League, but apparently, like, the idea of a Mutant Football League probably is a funny idea for a football game. It's going to come out in for $29.99. They'll have a retail exclusive team content, a dynasty mode, new playable races, multiplayer online, 25 unique teams of games, Hall of Fame commentary, dirty trick gameplay, multiplayer modes, and plus play mayhem. Seems to be coming out for the PS4, Switch, Xbox One. I'm not 100% sure that it's coming out for the PC. Yeah, no indication that it's coming out for the PC, though. Unfortunately. I feel like I was closer to a victory playing that than anything else, but this is certainly taking its time. 
GameIndustry.biz has um, an article, Outfit 7 is opening a new Barcelona studio. Uh, Barcelona studio. Talking Tom, developer, use new location for both Talking Tom games and new projects. I don't know what Talking Tom is. What is Talking Tom? Ashes. Apparently, Talking Tom is a cartoon series on YouTube? Some kind of cat? Or is it that software where you you can talk and then it will put... Yeah, it's some kind of cell phone app. Whatever. It probably just puts a cat face over your head while you're talking. Hmm. So, I'm really uninterested in that story. Uh, Gamato has an article, Home Sweet Home launches October 9th, PS4 physical edition due out October 16th at GameStop. So that must be worldwide, because I don't think there are any GameStops in Japan. Uh, the first picture here is a very grotesque, bloody uh, woman ghost character. Very much in the Japanese horror style. Um, let's see. Play this. Yes. Let's see. Home Sweet Home is a survival horror game based on the real world time mythology and lore. It'll launch for the PS4 and Xbox on October 9th. Uh, we should come to PC. It looks like it's a real horror game. Um, but apparently it's not. Yeah, we'll probably get more horror games come out as we get closer to Halloween. But I, I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't a smaller amount than you would normally think. Whenever you shuffle a card into the deck. Before me. Just gonna wait. Uh, Gamatsu has an article. Jump Force adds Kulula and Kurapika from Hunter x Hunter. So more characters being announced for Jump Force when that comes out. I'm sure it will be a full list. Uh, we have, um, here's a comment that came up because I'm a YouTube creator and I follow some other YouTube creators. It's an interesting thought. Actually, I kind of disagree with it, though. Uh, on September 25th, YouTube is seriously degrading embedded videos. They are not allowing anyone to prevent related videos from being shown at the end of the video. Uh, period. Bad for sales page. Bad for businesses. Biz developers google slash youtube player uh, so basically what this means is that all the little places where somebody had a youtube play video playing and embedded on their on their website now has to be part of what now of the ecosystem where where, where looking at that one video will try and push more people into watching more videos hmm. Of course, what that also means is that you might get to somebody's personal uh, website and then a video will play going, hey, this is my personal website, and then it will recommend a video that is completely unrelated or the competitor's uh, video. But I kind of disagree with it because what this is saying is YouTube wants to be profitable and it's no longer willing to just be this free internet hosting video site 
uh, service that doesn't, at the very least, bring in more people watching uh, for longer so they can show more ads. Um, so even if you had like a monetized video on your website and it was showing ads and it was bringing money to YouTube, they're saying that's not enough. We need people to continue to watch. Continue. They, they want all the money, not just some of the money. Uh, which, you know, I get it. And yeah, I definitely get why some people would be upset about that. And if I had a personal website, I would probably be upset about it too. I just think at at the bigger scale perspective, this is this is what YouTube has been pushing. Uh, if you have a per, per, personal website and you're showing a YouTube video, the the solution really is simple: host that video yourself. Like, just don't have it be a YouTube video, and pay the hosting, and and then ask yourself after doing that for a while. Is it worth getting that free hosting for that video, or um, or is it worth having recommended videos play at the end? And this might be a mistranslation, and this might not actually be happening. So, like, I didn't see a official statement from YouTube on this one, but YouTube is being very sneaky and trying to hide things or well make. Played make things um, seem one way when they really aren't. Moving on, we have a game on Steam called Gyro Cube VR, which is a Rubik's Cube in VR. 2x2x2 two by two by two, up to 5x5x5. Five by five by five. Seems like you're inside the cube, if I was to guess. You have to play it in VR. I'm not sure why you would want to do this. If you're big into Rubik's Cubes, why not just play with a Rubik's Cube? Why bring that into virtual reality when there's no benefit whatsoever? Um, I'm one more spell away from getting at least one thing done. Um, let's try Paladin. Let's see, we have a game on Steam called Meet Possible Chapter 1.5 says, Meet Possible Chapter 1.5 is a fast-paced, intense, endless side-scrolling flying action arcade game which depicts tragic events taking place in the outskirts of the kingdom of epic ton uh, fight for the epic aerial adventures. Now what's interesting here is the thumbnail of this picture looks really animated in the anime style, but the trailer here is, has the video not in full screen the and they have like a square border failed. all around it but then the actual game looks like it's in full screen it doesn't just doesn't look like anything is animated too well it's it's low pixel count 8 16 bit style uh animations and if this is just an infinite side scroller where you're collecting money and so it's like an infinite clicker style game. I, I can't you think that this be. is one worth playing. Are you afraid? It's 10% off for $3.59. No user reviews. This is the first game from this developer, so I don't know why it's 1.5. Instead of chapter one, I guess I'll be generous. I am almost certain in the end I won't be generous on this. What does this card do? Lifesteal. The end draws near. Um, let's see. move forward we have a game called itsy blitzy it's an arcade ar arcade style bullet hell brawler uh, seems like he, yeah it's a top-down bullet hell brawler style game 
most of the animation is just 3D polygons. It looks like it has a bit of a polish on it, but yeah, there's really nothing here that would make this game interesting visually. It's just a very generic area. The frozen throne calls. Azeroth will be purified. Let's just see if we can actually summon all four of the horsemen. And win that way. Itsy Blitzy is 15% off for $8.49. Uh, yeah, and for that reason, that's a very high price for the game they're offering. Let's close that down. Let's see. Next, we have a game on Steam called Awesome P. Help a greedy P make his way through a string of levels filled with deadly traps and cheap but dangerous enemies and collect all the coins that he can reach us. This looks 100% like a Game Boy game. It is in a greenish yellow uh, sepia tone, I think is the right term. There's a platformer where you're jumping up. There's a lot of polish here for what looks like a game that really is just a a platformer uh, let's see what the price is that that's the thing is if this was really really cheap maybe I'd want to do something like that but I kind the of have the question calls. well that did nothing yeah. it literally did nothing yeah, Awesome P is $3.99. The fact that it's not in color is, is really the problem for games like this. It is just a platformer. It looks a lot better than a lot of other platformers, certainly, but it's still not good enough. The only other game this developer has made is called Voxel Tanks, which looks more like a joke game. So, yeah. Haunt Divine Shield. Life Steel. Divine Shield. Next, we have a game on Steam called Lucifer's Forest. I think we've already had a game that was either really, really close to this or the exact same game. It's basically just an asset flip wandering around the forest game. I can tell you immediately uh, it's a troll game because they've got a picture of Gabe Newell in several of these pictures. Like, yeah, this is clearly a troll, troll game. Yeah, several of the achievements have pictures of Gabe Newell. 20% off for $3.99. This game is going to get banned, and so is this developer, I'm almost certain. Um, You're shivering. Right, so we do Are you this. Okay? Last judgment. Time's up. Let's do this. <laughs> We have a game called Age of Viking Conquest on Steam. It seems like that's probably named to confuse you with probably a mobile game called Age of Vikings or Vikings Conquest. I'm sure there's a game by both names. They say it's a strategy simulation. And it does have some polish on it. It's it's doesn't look like it's just an extremely low effort game. Finally, we got one thing done. That is all we've really done on, and we're still on the European account too. It's three hours in. It's pretty ridiculous. Age of Viking Conquest is 30% off for $3.49. I think we're good to close that tab. 
Death Seer Thrall versus hmm. Frost Lich Jaina. And Do at not this point, like, I think I want to wrap up and just say this is going to be the last it. game for this recording. And then we're going to do some pro show. And heart, even though there's the some search. games um, here that are still worth talking about, I'm just going to hold them till Friday. Here's a completely homophobic game that got on Steam. I'm sure that will get flagged at some point. We already talked about that. Job's done. So, I'm gonna try and finish as much of this as possible, but if there's a few, few more things. This is an article that doesn't need to be talked about because it's talking about a game that's not even, doesn't even have a release date. Uh, GameIndustry.biz has an article, Aaron Flynn joins Improbable, the former Bioware general manager talks about getting his head in the clouds and building new, a new studio from the scratch in downtown Edmonton. Uh, when Aaron Flynn left the Edmonton-based Bioware last year, the former general manager for, of Mass Effect Studio had a number of career options, but many of them would have involved leaving Alberta capital he's called home for more than a quarter of a century. Um, so yeah, this is a full-on interview if you're interested alone. in reading it, but I think the story basically just falls down to it, it really is just um, a simple sentence of he's joined a new company. TechRafter has an article, Castlevania Symphony of the Night and Rondo of Blood for PS4 has been raided in Korea. I believe this is a not remake that they're releasing but it's going to be a bundle. I'm not sure if I have the have the full details. The Tokyo Game Show will probably clear that up when that happens. The choice is mine alone. Let's see. What does this do? Transform a friendly minion into a random one that costs one more. Let's do that. Echo cards. Do I have any echo cards? Game of Citrus and Oracle Wargaming opens a new UK studio to develop free to play MMO games. There we go. Um, so. Let's get over here. I'm trying to go through all the news here and, and close everything that I've talked about and leave everything else alone. Dragon Ball Fighter Z DLC character Android 17 has been announced. That's uh, it's kind of surprising Android 17 wasn't in there to begin with. I have so many games that I, I guess, ever so generously am going to wish list that it's kind of hard to even get to the point where we need to be. There's trouble here, certainly. Like, minimum, before midnight, I have to get at least one of these daily quests done on the Asian account and theoretically ideally I'd want to get at least two of these done uh, particularly to get the tavern ball stuff done before the tavern balls leave which when do the tavern ball leaves in four days so I probably am fine there but it certainly opens 
uh, opens up the door to some issues that where I could screw it up pretty badly and then not get that 300 gold and let's see I'm just clicking on things right now and just apparently some of these games did not even get added to my wish list the last time that could explain why there's so many tabs open yeah I, I got busy scheduling videos and uploading videos I've made it to the humble bundle store um, One special day bundle is new. So Streets of Rage, Crazy Taxi, a Binary Domain, and Ollie Ollie 2 for one dollar for the Steam codes. I think I probably am missing Streets of Rage and maybe Crazy Taxi. I think I have Binary da Domain and possibly Ollie Ollie. If you pay more than the average of six dollars and twenty-eight cents, you also unlock Surgeon Simulator Anniversary Edition, Grid 2, Alpha Protocol. Operation Flashpoint Red River. If you pay $9 or more, you get Marvel's Garden of the Galaxy Telltale series in limited quantity. Uh, so, you know, that probably isn't a bad deal just to pay $9 for that alone. And Stronghold Crusaders. And. Let's see. and close that uh, itch.io has released a improved client for if you're big in the itch.io that's a tech raptor article and see I think that just leaves us as far as I can get um, I've got too many tabs open uh, we've been streaming for three hours. It's time for a silent post show, and it's the first time in a long time that we've had a silent post show. Uh, I theoretically want to get something, but I guess I'll probably switch over to the Asian account and make sure I get that done first. That's going to be it for this recording and the speaking portion of this uh, stream as always i ask you to like share subscribe comment and watch every second of my videos if you want a friend to follow me on any social media sites there's a whole bunch of links down below in the description and if you want to support me even further i'm asking people to support me on patreon thank you for watching have a good evening